area under a graph via integration. Integration, of course, has many uses. Uh, finding the area under a graph is just one of them. Many people mistakenly use uh, or quote area under the graph as the definition of integration. But uh, integration probably has an infinite number of uses. So if we return to our concept of finding an estimate via rectangles, grab a set of axes here, a function that's reasonably curvy, and I wish to find this area here from A up to B, then I can divide this area up into a number of rectangles. My pen is glitching. To find this particular area. Now, I'm doing inner or lower rectangles. But for the purposes of this derivation, it doesn't matter. Uh, it should be clear that the smaller those rectangles, the smaller the width of those rectangles, the more of them I take, the better that estimate for the area will be. So the area under a graph can be found precisely, precisely by taking a great many of these triangles. In fact, let's take a lot of them. We found precisely by taking an infinite number of lower rectangles. So I want my number of rectangles n. I want that to go to infinity. So the height of any one of them or all of them, height of each h goes to 1 on infinity. Remember it's uh, b minus a on n, so as n goes to infinity, which is that thing's going to 0. Now, in this case, we define this, we define this as delta x. Uh, note that's lowercase delta. And in this case, uh, we're using it to mean small difference. Lowercase small delta d for difference. So let me let me examine just one rectangle. Oops. Drop in another set of axes here. Try to replicate the same looking function. I'm going from A up to B. Does it look anything like that one? Yeah, close enough. Then, if I examine this one at X, this point here has to be X plus delta X, the height of the rectangle, or the width of the rectangle. 
with the rectangles delta x, the height to this point here is f of x. So the area of, looks terrible, the area of any one rectangle Well, that's got to be its height, which is the function value at x, times its width, which is delta x. So if delta x does go to zero, I can say that the total area, it's the, I need this to go to zero, it is the sum from A to B of all of those rectangles, each of which is f of x, oops, delta x, still in discrete land. All right. Now, limits of this form are denoted as that thing there. And to say that, we say this is the, um, the definite integral. of the function, so this is of f of x from a up to b, from a to b. And there we have it. So we arrive at the, oops, not what I wanted, trying, maybe 1.5, yes, good, 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 good. And da da da. All right, all well and good. So, how is it that we begin to evaluate this expression? Well, you already know from your exercises on finding primitives, you already know how to do this. So expressions on another page. Thank you. Expressions of this form Uh, eval and then evaluated via the primitive. Try to be neat. So if I do have the integral from a to b of f of x dx, then that's the primitive value at b minus the primitive value at a. Let me once again I'll highlight this one. How did that happen? Losing control. That's what I want. All right, so just a note at this point 
that you know I haven't put area in front of this uh, because it doesn't always give you the area. So we're going to see later that this won't always give you the area. So note the evaluation. doesn't necessarily is a good word, doesn't necessarily give you the area that you're after, give the sort after area. And we'll see that later. All right. So some examples. So example one, if I return, come on, there we go. If I return to the example that I used last time, I had x on 2 and we evaluated this up to 4, froze from 0 to 4. So we wanted this area. Try and be a little... No, that'll do. And we worked out already that that's half the base times the height. Half the base there is 2. The height is 2. The function value at 4 is 2. And so that should give an area of 4. So let's do this via integration now, rather than simply by looking at it as a simple triangle. So the area then is equal to the integral from 0 to 4 of the function dx. Now, I have a habit of pulling the constants out. Doesn't always work to my favor, but it's a habit nonetheless. Uh, and you already know from your work on primitives that that is x squared on 2. Now we use these square brackets often to denote uh, that we've taken the primitive. They're very, uh, notation will differ depending on where you are in the world. But here in New South Wales, we'll be using this. So from 0 to 4, and continue my habit of pulling constants out. From 0 to 4. So it's the function, it's the primitive value at 4. So that's 4 squared minus the primitive value at 0, which is 0 squared, and not to label the point or anything, that's a quarter of 16, which is 4. 4, in this case, it's an area. 4, just as we had once before, and just to show that it wasn't a trick, Let's complete what was example two from last time. We had f of x is x on two plus two. We nudged it up by two. So we've effectively added in a rectangle of two by eight, a uh, two by four, which is eight. So eight and four should give us 12. So the area in this case has got to be from 0 to 4 of x on 2 plus 2 dx. 
Uh, don't forget the brackets around your expression. I'm grappling whether or not to pull half out. That won't help though, I don't think. So I take the primitive, I get x and 1 to the power and divide by it. That becomes on 4 plus 2x. I need to evaluate that at 0 and 4. 4 squared, 16 on 4 ends up being 4. Oh, I don't need the square bracket. Uh, 16 squared on 4 is 4. Oops. And 2 times 4 is 8. Minus the value, well, these are all zeros. And still, don't need that guy. And 4 and 8 is 12. As it was before. Right, well, let's try something a little more interesting. Let's have a function that looks like this. I tried to make something up that was nice and symmetrical. So to look at this thing, of axes I'm going to want. I'm going to want that guy. Thank you. Thank you. So you can see straight off this thing has roots at 0, 1, and 2. So it is something. Not quite as, let's have one more go. No. Close enough, something like that. Uh, and this is one and this is two. Let's find the Let's find the area, let's find this one. So the area from 0 to 1 of this particular function. Now if you, a lot easier to, a lot easier to, uh, a lot easier to integrate. We'll find the primitive of it when you expand this thing out. And I think that's correct. So if I find the primitive now, x to the 3 on, that's x to the 4 on 4. Uh, the 3s are going to cancel here, so I'll just be left with x to the 3. And this would be x to the squared on 2, so that's going to cancel it as well. And from 0 to 1. Um, uh, I see the 8 and the 4 there, and I really want to bring it back in again. So uh, let me do that. Uh, it becomes a 2. 8 divided by 4 is 2. x to the 4 minus 8x cubed plus 8x squared, not to 1. I'd like to get it in this page if I can. If I now evaluate that, I end up with 2 minus 8 plus 8. And these are all nothings. And that will give me 2 units squared. So that area there is 2. Now, what if I 
took the same thing, the same function, what do I have to? Four. Example four. Actually, you know what? I wonder. There we go. Save myself the embarrassment of having to try to draw that again. Not that it was great the first time. What now if I want the area from naught to two? Right, well, you might think, okay, well, it's the integral from naught to two of the same function. And you take the primitive and end up back at the same place as you did before. At this time, when you substitute in, you end up with 32 minus 64 plus 32. I like all these binary numbers. And x is in each one at zero is zero. And the whole thing ends up with being zero. Now, clearly the area is not zero. This integration, this definite integral is correct. Well, it's um What's a better way of saying it? It's true. It's true. But it is not the desired area. So, what's going on? Well, let's look at the let's look at the value of the thing, the second half that we added in. Already, the first bit was two. You're suspecting this is minus two. Can I have minus an area? Well, let's have a look. So again, if I go from one to two of the same function. All right, the primitive's the same. Let me evaluate it from two. And we know this first bit is zero already. It's 32 minus 64 plus 32. But then when I evaluate it at one, I end up with minus two. Aha! Uh -huh. Well, the reason we end up with zero is because we're adding two, and minus two gives us our zero. So, effectively, the area under the x axis, or above the graph and under the x axis, is zero, uh, is negative. And so, In order to find the area, now if I actually write the area statement, it's got to be from naught to one of this particular function plus I need to take the absolute value of this thing. Oops. Which we found that first one we found was two plus the absolute value of minus two. And that will give us, oops, 
our area of four. All right, so we note the area under the x-axis um, and over the function from a to b is we need to take the absolute value and that's a nice result so let's put a box around that one Right, so if you're given a question in the future where the function dips below the x-axis, then you need to firstly maybe find at that particular point. In this case, for this one, it was here. Uh, it was already factorized, so it was easy for me to find. You may have to factorize the thing to find the roots. Find where it crosses over and divide the integral into multiple pieces, uh, that which is above and below the x-axis. One more point before we go. Uh, in that regards, even an odd functions so even and odd functions give us a symmetry even, of course, is a symmetry in the y-axis, and odd is point symmetry about the origin, and we can exploit we can exploit that symmetry to make things a little easier. So, if you're asked for a symmetrical area. So if you're asked for a symmetrical area about an even or odd function, you've only got to do half the problem. We can find half of the area and then double it. Need another page. So, for example, I'm up to five. Oops, I'm searching for something like that. Thank you. And let me have, oh, it's meant to be a horizontal point of inflection. Oh, try one last time. That'll do. That's terrible. I can do better. Okay, uh, let me have four, a constant of four at the front of this cubic. And if you're asked for the area, say from uh, 
from one or from minus one. Minus one to one. That, of course, is one cubed times four. That's minus four. Then now let's let's say naively if we were to say from minus one to one, a four x cubed dx. This is four times the same thing, taking the constant out the front, which is four times x to the. I shouldn't have taken the four out. X to the four on four. I'm just going to cancel with my constant again. Get x to the four from one to minus from minus one to one from the bottom to the top. Trying to keep it to this page, I get one, and that'll be minus one to the four, which is one, which gives me zero. So again, we can see the what is effectively negative area on the left cancelling with the area on the right, and so that's not going to work. Now, of course, you could use this kind of approach where you broke it up into two pieces and took the absolute value of the second half, or the first half in this case, because it's below on the on the left. But of course, it's an odd function, and so it's symmetrical, and so the area on the left is equal to the area on the right. So again, this is true. True, but uh, just make a little note there. It's not wrong. It's not what it's not the area that we want. In this case, the area the area is going to be twice that from naught to one of the function. dx and evaluate that thing, get x to the 4, the 4's cancel, 0 to 1, so it's 2, I can leave some square brackets behind, put the 1 in here, 1 to the 4 is 1, 0 to the 4 is 0, not the label is a point or anything, I end up with two. Two units squared. Now, now if it was an even function and it was still a symmetrical area about the about the y-axis, then the same is true. So generally, for even and odd functions, the area. between the curve oops, curve graph I should probably prefer the term curve it'll make the discrete mathematicians less angry and the x-axis from and if we acknowledge that it's a symmetrical range from minus a to a then we find that via and we could you know the the thing could do down on the right and we're taking it 
from the origin to the right. So we need the absolute value. Just trying to get the absolute value more centered. That's terrible. That'll do. Uh, from naught to A of the function. Ta da All right, so if it's an even or odd function, you can cut your work in half. And that is it for this lesson. This is Keith Johnston. Thank you for watching.